Welcome back, YouTubers, to another TNA Impact Wrestling Review. This was the second show that was taped in England out of force. We still have two more of these to look forward to. Um, this one came from Manchester. We're the British Fist. Gotcha. I'm Mr. Park, and this guy sitting next to me is MJ People. Oh, he has his monster today. What does that make you think about TNA Impact Wrestling, guys? What's up? But still a very enthusiastic what's up, I see. Subscribe down below, like down below, and comment down yeah, below. And make sure you contact us in the links in the description box below. Yes, and also make sure you send in your what's ups to us. We've said it a lot now, so that's all we need to say. What's up? Indeed, that will be up on the Elimination Chamber Review on the, I believe, the 17th. And it is also NJ's birthday, so make sure you get your what's ups in. We can have a really nice birthday present for NJ. Uh, so going into this TNA about wrestling... Um, we opened up the show with the Aces and Eights. Uh, all but one of them are unmasked now because uh, an Ooh. anonymity is uh, is power. And um, did you know? You remember when Knox and Devon and Doc got unmasked? They actually had consequences to their actions. Well, where were the where were the consequences for Wes Briscoe and um, Garrett voluntarily unmasking themselves? Taz oh. unmasking themselves. Storyline oh. continuancy. I, I personally think the fact that. D1, who seems to be the mouthpiece of it, is just saying, like, right, we're getting revealed so quickly, let's just crap our rules and just get on with it. <laughs> didn't they bring in Taz to be a spokesperson because they didn't think D1 was that good of one? I I don't know what's going on with this angle anymore, but you look at this faction in the ring, and I'm sorry, you've got D1, an old washed-up wrestler, Mike Knox, who was a jobber in WWE, Luke Gallows, you know, okay, Garrett Bischoff, Wes Briscoe, Mr. Anderson and a retired professional wrestler in Taz who does shitty commentary for the company. What an intimidating team we have here trying to take over TNA. No wonder that they get taken out by just one person. I mean, for fuck's sake, this faction is hardly a badass faction, is it? Let's face it. The sad thing about this is that the Ace and Eight, like, this could have been a big chance to give Wes Briscoe some build if the faction was good. The fact is, they're newcomers into TNA, yeah. but. They're just not getting the push. Like, I believe that person's going to become a great champion sometime. I just don't feel this is good. They showed a video package of how great they are attacking people. But they, they didn't do show a match. They didn't show a match. They didn't show them winning a match or anything. It's just the fact that Garrett and Briscoe, what do they add to the team? I mean, Briscoe, yes, maybe. But Garrett Bischoff, no. And this whole takeover of TNA, you know, what have they took over? Have they took over anything? Because as far as I've seen, since Bound for Glory, they've just been losing match after match after match. And that's the, it. The sad thing is, the best thing these could have done is, like I was hoping for, to go after individual titles to take over. But they're not even doing that. Stick with the TV, that's it. Can you blame the crowd for chanting, who are you, who are you, and what, throughout this whole promo? Especially when Garrett Bischoff was on the mic. The crowd freaking hated this group, didn't they? You could just tell by the crowd, who are you, who are you? Because, literally... They're rookies in this massive faction. I don't know, this Ace and Eights angle is just bullshit to me right now. I can't be get behind anything they do with the faction right now. Even if the leader is revealed to be good, like a bully ray or something, that even hurts them. Because if you, even, if, even if you have a good leader, you're still... You're st they've led a shit faction to do nothing in the freaking company. The thing is, they can't really do much more. The members are getting revealed... They're not going after titles, so to be honest, lockdown needs to be the full stop point and just move on. Yeah, I have a feeling it won't, though. Just, oh, I don't know why. I just have a feeling they're going to continue this on to some anniversary or something. Um, so, yeah, that opening segment, as you can probably tell, we didn't really like it that much. Um, we then got Rob Van Dam versus Kenny King versus Zeem Arn in an exhibition championship match. Um, something you'd think they would pre announce or hype up or something other than just putting it randomly on the TV show. I'm just saying. I look at this match and I can see there's a feud between Rob and Dam and probably King. I am getting added in because of past matches. It was okay. It's X Division. They're getting involved in TV. But I don't really care about this. Not as much as I was hoping to. I, I just couldn't believe it got more than four minutes. Generally, X Division matches get four minutes, and it's like, meh. But this one got six minutes. It was a pretty decent match, in all honesty. You had Rob Van Dam steal Kenny King's victory. So it looks like they're teasing an RVD Kenny King match, which hopefully will be the time when Kenny King actually wins the damn belt. Um, James Storm was in action this week. Um, remember last year when he was main eventing and an integral part of the of the English taped TV shows? Well, this year, he's up against Jesse Goddard. 
Is this really the best you have for a guy like James Storm? I used to really care about James Storm. He was one of my favourite characters in wrestling. Now, I couldn't give two fucks about what they do with James Storm. I really can't. I used to be really emotionally invested in this character. Remember, you're the rude guy. I'm the James Storm guy. Look what your guy's doing. He's winning tag titles. My guy now is relegated to fucking Jesse Goddard's. The thing is, they could have done good. Like James Storm could have been a strong member to go against the Ace Knights, just to keep him up somewhere relevant, Anything somewhere important. Because this. this, I really can't see this being a future for him. I can't see like they're all waiting for AJ, and they haven't seen <laughs> what can Storm do till AJ returns. Pretty much seems like that to me. But uh, we'll just move on to the uh, Aries and Rude title win. Um, really, isn't much in, we need to say about this. Austin Aries and Bobby Rude beat Los Stereotypicos. The match went about 18 minutes plus commercials, which was really quite long. Um, and these, you're looking at two former World Heavyweight Champions going up against Chavo and Hernandez here. Um, why did it take them 18 freaking minutes to win? Uh, the thing I say about this is that I'm gonna, I'm for and against it. I'm for it because now we have some really strong champions. We have the tag titles moved off to someone better. We've had great mic work, great tag team work. Everything was going really well for them. The bad thing is, you've taken up two of your best people in the main event scene, put them into a tag team, put them into a feud, made them win the tag titles, and now you're thinking, right, who do we have in the main event scene? What can we do for the main event scene? And I just think we can complement it, but also, what is this doing for the main event scene? I guess TNA's logic here is to keep Rude and Aries in a good spot, while also maybe bringing some new people to the main event, which, let's face it, the main event has been dominated by Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, and Bobby Roode for quite a long time. I think it's about time we got some fresh faces in that main event scene, personally. I believe that's why they've done this, personally. Well, I look at this now, and even though we've got better tag teams than who we had before, who is going to be the next face tag team to beat these two? It's not it's noticeable, so yeah, give them the tag belts. Now what? My main thing here is the belts are off Los Stereotypicos and on an entertaining tag team. Um, and it's funny to think that in under two years, Austin Aries has become a triple crown champion, longest reigning X Division champion, a world champion, and now a tag team champion in under two years. How good does that show you that Austin Aries is? Maybe he is actually the greatest man that ever lived. It could be a case. Just maybe. Well, apart from NJ, but he may be the second greatest man that ever lived. New tag champs, yay. Miss Teshmaga versus Terra. Um, again, it's just a, another knockout segment where we've seen this before. It was very inconsequential. Why does Tara keep turning around and expecting Jesse Goddard? She knows that he's not going to be there. It was said in. It was said before the match. So why is she looking around for him? Why does he just concentrate on winning the damn match? But no, because she's a heel and they've changed her character. They have to have her looking around the freaking ring, even though she knows that he's not going to be there. I look at this match. I won't entertain, but it's not one of the best knockout matches. And I just think that this match. It's good you get knockouts involved, but I don't really care one bit. I can't fault the work. The work is fine. It's just that. Man, how many times have we seen this match before? Man, this is a theme in the knockouts division right now. There's just nothing new, nothing fresh. We've seen all this stuff before. They need to do something freaking new. And to combine this with what we're going to go on to next, you had the British boot camp. You had possible new knockouts there who could have stepped in. The Blossoms. But they didn't win. So I think, to be honest... I'm hoping they can step in. Yes, they probably come as a tag team, so that's going to mean the knockouts tag title being brought back to justice. But one of these two could have been involved here. You also have Taylor Hendricks as well, I think. Could, you could yeah, where's she gone? Uh, she's gone down back to OVW by the looks of it. Um, oh. But anyway, the knockouts need some new faces because, quite frankly, a knockout segment now is getting hard to really watch, even though the women generally are quite sexy. I will say that. Um... We get to see Rockstar Spud for the first time. We didn't watch TNA Boot Camp, so for us, this was our first sighting of Rockstar Spud. What did you? What was your first impressions of Rockstar Spud, apart from the fact that he was probably smaller than a leprechaun? A few words I'm going to say. That when I look at Rockstar Spud, is woo, woo, woo. I thought I was looking at there, <laughs> and I thought that's that's an act of Zack Ryder. I thought <laughs> Zack Ryder there, but so, in a more popular fashion. <laughs> so who else? Who 
more perfect to interrupt him than Robbie E. The other guy that people think is a Zack Ryder ripoff. Um, so you have Robbie E. come out, interrupt Rockstar Spurred. And then you have this whole thing with Robbie T. and Rockstar Spurred sort of teaming up together. He's going to punch you. He's going to knock you out. He's going to take you out when he needs to. He's going to beat you down. I just got to stand behind him. He's going to take you down for me. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, Robbie E. really relies on Robbie T, doesn't he? Robbie T is definitely the muscle of the gang. Like, I am the muscle of the British fist. <laughs> I'm only joking, MJ. You still haven't seen this guy's pecs. <laughs> now, <laughs> now you have. Be intimidated. Um... So yeah, Rockstar Spurred, I'm interested to see, I'm interested to see what they do with him now. And uh, Robbie T, well, all I can say is a face turn, better than what he's doing with Robbie E. Now try giving him some sort of singles push. Rockstar Spurred go up into the X Division, probably going against Ryan. I think that could be a kind of a few, two small guys going against mm. each other. This whole thing between the Robbies, they've teased breaking it before, they didn't break up. So if they stay together and be like, second attempt, <laughs> wasted. <laughs> Let me get to our main event of the evening. Yes, we did. <laughs> Aces and Eights opened the show. We didn't like it. Aces and Eights main event of the show. Um, Devon and Doc versus Sting and Bully Ray in a tables match. Um, man, I just, I had just had no interest in this match. The only time I looked up and watched this match was when Bully Ray was hulking up. That is the only thing I cared about in this match. Bully Ray gets the win. Didn't really care about this match one bit. There was aspects of using the whole Team 3D thing, like the what the jump off the rope yeah. headbutt, but they didn't go, what's up? I was hoping this thing would. <laughs> I was hoping maybe a 3D finish, but Bully Ray finished with the spine buster or the power bomb, the uh, spine buster through yes. the table. Okay, the hulking up thing. Uh, gosh, you, like we've got John Cena in WWE. <laughs> we've got Bully Ray now doing it. We've got Hogan doing it. I think just because you're part of the Hogan family does not mean you have to become Hulk Hogan's son or <laughs> some magical whatever is going on with him. But I don't really care about the main event. Well, here we go. We've got Sting, who is a guy I really don't care too much about, versus Bully Ray, uh, in, and Bully Ray versus a faction that I don't really care about that uh, just can't win a match. And this is another example where they lose, despite the fact that Aces and Ace member actually came in. And it was a no DQ match, so the whole Aces and Ace could have stormed the ring if they wanted to, but they chose not to because, well, this is the great booking that TNA decide to give their factions that are taking over the company. <laughs> Ace and Ace, each and every week, you're becoming a freaking joke. This week, you're just a crippled old sting and a joke of a buddy being Buddy Ray. Each every week, people are joining you. They're laughing at you. Each every week, you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not. Ace and H, you need to be finished. Don't. Trust me, the best is yet to come. Yes, everything is in place. <laughs> Finally. Well, that's not a problem at all, is it? <laughs> this show, to me, just... I really wasn't that entertained by it. I, I know it's in the UK and the crowd was good and everything, but when the product you're watching is stale, you've got this Ace and Eight stuff going on, there isn't really too much storyline progression in this show to lockdown, which is going to be in about a month's time. I'm sorry, the show to me, there was only seven segments on the show as well. The show to me just really didn't entertain me all that much tonight. I really didn't care about this show. There weren't much that made me want to look at the screen and enjoy it. New tag champs, very good, nice spot, probably why we're so for this. But main event, it didn't really hype up next week's show or anything. So all I can say is TNA... <laughs> Please do better. Yeah, I mean, really do better because your shows are honestly starting to become... Remember when Raw started to get really boring when it became three hours? This is how TNA is starting to feel for me, and I really didn't think I'd be saying that about six months ago. I really didn't before Bound for Glory. So give us your thoughts on this edition of TNA Impact Wrestling down in the comment section below, and uh, Chanel, I'll hand you over to the right and honourable NJ.
People, please try to enjoy TNA. Give us the good and give us the bad of it in the comments below. And for Mr. Parkin and me, NJ, hopefully you've enjoyed our review. And as always, keep smiling and goodbye.